Nogales and Santa Cruz County and Nogales, Sonora, they're twin cities. It's called Nogales, Arizona here and Nogales, Sonora on the Mexican side. We've always considered ourselves as one community. Historically, you know, the culture, the economy, uh, families, just about everything is intertwined down here along the border. So the only thing that separates us is a wall or a fence. And in some places, we don't even have that. There's no fence or wall at all? I got 50 miles of border, and in some places, there's nothing. 80% right here on this side is Hispanic and Mexican and probably over 90% on the Mexican side. So we're dealing with a large number uh, of Hispanics. And where we will start and where we will stop in determining uh, who's here legally and who isn't, it's gonna be a task. Uh, Border Patrol, for example, goes through months and months of training and continuous training in order to deal with, with legal immigration, which is a very complex issue, very complex. And we don't have the uh, technology to make that determination. We're going to have to reach out, Border Patrol, take people here, bring them there, try to make that determination and find out if they have a history or if they're here legally or illegally. We don't have the training. We don't have the resources. We don't have the budget to do all of that. The state of Arizona and Arizona Post, that's kind of like a governing board for certification of peace officers here in, in, in Arizona, is going to produce a one-hour video, one hour to teach us and show us exactly how we're going to implement this law without racial profiling. It's about 45,000 people in the Arizona side here of Santa Cruz County, about 300, 400,000 people on the Mexican side. That's a third world country. You know, there are big issues that they're grappling with over there. You have a homicide just about every day there. It's over 100 homicides so far this year, just on the Mexican, right across the border from us. And yet here, on the Arizona side, just on this side of the border, homicides are practically non-existent. I think we had one last year. I think the Nogales Police Department had one also. So the crime, as far as that is concerned, is very, very low down here. So there's no crisis? There's no crisis at all here. I could safely say that we have never really had to concern ourselves with a major wave of crimes. What would you say to someone who said, well, if we had no illegal immigrants here, we'd have no crimes committed by illegal immigrants, so therefore it's actually going to improve our public safety if we take measures to um, get rid of those people? Well, I mean, uh, yeah, you can start there, and then I guess you can start categorizing other people and eventually get rid of crime altogether and get rid of everybody. But I don't think the illegal immigrant is, is, is a major factor in, in these issues of crime, I don't think so. In a lot of cases, they may be victims of it, uh, but I don't think they're perpetrators. Yeah, you're gonna have perpetrators, whether they're here legal or illegal. One of the things that I have said is that we don't need Senate Bill 1070 to deal with that. We already have laws in every state in the United States to deal with criminals, whether they're here legally or illegally. So if we do that, we've got no problem. Leave the people that are not har harming anybody, actually contributing alone, and spend all your resources spend all your efforts on the criminals. History proves that having good relationship with the community is your best law enforcement, you know, uh, and, and crime prevention tool it can have. We have been working for years trying to set up a relationship with the communities, especially here with the Hispanic community. Uh, and that's gonna deteriorate, obviously, because they're gonna look at us differently. We're not gonna be the regular law enforcement officer that they can call. That, that will not ask them for their immigration papers and will be there to help them. Now they'll probably be afraid to call because maybe a relative, a friend, an acquaintance, or somebody that happens to be there is here illegally. And, and that's gonna create some, some concerns and issues for them, so they may say, we're not gonna call you. You know, potential witnesses to a crime, uh, it's gonna be a problem. So let's say you were investigating a crime and there was a witness and they refused to show you identification. What would you do then? Well, there's obviously a law that people have to identify them themselves. Uh, but, you know, we, we would probably be forced to investigate it further and find out exactly uh, who they are, even if we have to detain them to make that determination. So it, it's going to be a complicated issue for, for law enforcement. For example, if, if that situation happened to be a, a U.S.-born uh, individual that just refuses to cooperate, it's going to be 
very difficult and very complicated. And I think we're going to be tested. Our officers are going to be tested by some of these people. And, and that's where I'm afraid of because that's where you got your lawsuits. If you don't do it, you get sued. If you do it and you do it wrong, you get sued. So, you know, it put us in a pretty precarious uh, situation as far as law enforcement. If you are sued, who pays for the legal defense? Does it come out of your budget? It or? comes out of the county. The county is uh, in an insurance pool of smaller counties, and they contribute to that. And any time they get sued, they get represented. And, of course, it costs the county for that representation. And then if we, if we lose a lawsuit, it also the insurance uh, pool will pay for it. But then on the other end, the county will pay a little more in premium. So, yeah, eventually the county will pay for it. I see. And so does that mean that taxes will go up or you just kind of cut back on other things? It could be both. We may not have enough to be able to you know, increase taxes because the only thing we can do is increase, increase property tax along here. That's all we can do. Um, probably curtail, uh, reduce services. That's about it. So that's why I'm saying that, you know, this, we cannot afford Senate Bill 1070. We cannot afford it. Uh, I know that some organizations are for it, uh, some police organizations are for it, but I think not being managers, uh, like the chiefs and the sheriffs, they don't realize the, the implications, the financial implications. If we spend more money in detention, care, hospitalization, prosecution, defense, uh, yeah, it's going to hurt the whole county, just not law enforcement. It's going to hurt the whole county. So a solo deputy encounters somebody who is definitely from Mexico, but he's not sure if they're just visiting or they're here sneaking across the border, and if they're visiting, are they doing so legally? Uh, what's the next step? Well, try to make a determination if they are here legally or not. And if they're not, then we have to take some type of action. Either contact Border Patrol so that they can take in uh, custody, or like I indicated, my biggest fear is that Border Patrol will say, no, you got them, you keep them, you find out. Th that's our concern. Our concern is having to spend all the time and all the resources in trying to determine if that person here is legally or not. And, and we could, one of our deputies could come across 15 at any given time up in the valley or on the rural area. That's going to take a lot of time. Mm -hmm. Now, if he's going to transport them somewhere, you know, if you're going to transport them here, we're going to have to send, I don't know how many squad cars out there or vans to bring them up, bring them in here. It's just a humongous problem. Well, how many deputies do you have patrolling at any given time? Usually it's about five or six max per shift for 1,240 square miles and 50 miles of border and having to deal with, uh, you know, populated areas like Rio Rico, Sonoita, Elgin, Tubac, Tumacacuri. During this time when you have this initial deputy spending time doing the determination and let's say three or four deputies become involved in the process of determining legal status of um, 15 people he's encountered, who is keeping the community safe? Who's covering for them? Well, if we don't have anybody, there's nobody else. I mean, you could probably have Border Patrol uh, out there uh, in case something comes up, you know, that they may help out and assist and back us up. But that's not their responsibility, and that's not their priority. And they don't have any authority over that. So, you know, it all leaves it up to local law enforcement. So if we're tied up doing federal work, and the federal agencies in particular, Border Patrol, cannot or will not take those individuals, we've got a big problem. We've got a humongous problem. Well, what if um, the governor gets reelected, and she says, well, I'm going to raise taxes enough so that you have 18 or 20 deputies at any given time so half of them can do immigration law and the other half can do public safety. Yeah, that's that's uh, ludicrous. That's crazy. <laughs> that is that is really crazy. I don't I don't think anything like that would fly. Especially of course it would have to be a state tax. They already raised the state tax by 1 cent. It's not fair to the taxpayers, not fair to law enforcement. Cuz law enforcement wants to do the best job for the people that reside and visit this community. And dealing with immigration uh, is going to be a tremendous distraction.